Did I happen to mention at any point that this year was going to be a bit of an experimental one for this channel? No? I'm really sorry to have missed that out, but it has been and will continue to be for a bit. So in that vein, it's new video format time. In this video, I'll be attempting a breakdown of some drum parts that another drummer has played. Let's check it out. <sighs> Man, I feel tired just watching that. Anyway, that crazy bit of drumming was from the ending of the song Rattle by Elevation Worship. Lately, they've been posting a lot of great playthroughs as well as these drum cam videos from songs off their latest album on their YouTube channel, so go check it out if you want to learn those songs, it's a great resource. A couple weeks ago, it was my student that picked up on this pretty interesting and unique ending by the drummer Vincent Baynard, where he played a really noisy and intense fill at the end of the song. Now, these kinds of fills are also known as trash can endings, which is not the most glamorous name, but you have to admit, it kind of makes sense. A trash can ending is usually very loud and very busy. Now, at any skill level of drumming, you can just hit anything as loud and fast as you possibly can, and you'll kind of get by, but it's always nice to add new ideas to your vocabulary so that you can um, yell more coherently behind the drum kit, so to speak. I mean, they say music is a language, right? So. Trash can endings are like, yeah. I really wanted to do a breakdown for this ending because I felt like this kind of a video would have benefited me personally if I was the one watching it. But it took me a really long time to get around to it because I just didn't know how to approach it. For one, you can't really transcribe this, or you could, but it's there's no real point to it because one, there's no set tempo, and two, we're not actually trying to copy what he's doing. We just want to steal some nice ideas that we can use. In the end, I've identified four concepts that he uses throughout this ending fill spam, and I'll be slowing down snippets of his playing, showing you some examples of that particular concept, and then I'll explain and try and demonstrate a bit of it on the e-kit here so I don't wake anyone up because it's the middle of the night. Let's check out idea number one. Idea number one is basically just single strokes, right, left, right, left, between any two symbols. In this case, his right hand was on the main crash and his left hand was on the open hi-hat. Now, this is not the difficult part, but it's just a small subtlety that some drummers miss out, and that has to do with ending the song. We're not even talking about the trash can ending yet, but the song itself, most of the time you'll want to end cleanly on your crash and just one kick drum hit rather than immediately ending the song and then going into this bass drum spam. So what he did is he just hit the crashes with one bass drum note and the kick comes in much later. That's idea two. So let me show you a negative example of how to end a song with the kick drum coming in way too early. Positive example now. This way the music has a little bit more space to breathe in between the actual song as well as the trash can ending, but not to worry, it's gonna get a little more intense in idea number two. The second idea is actually really close to the first idea, so I hesitated to call it a concept by itself, but it's also got a couple layers, so we'll just discuss it a bit separately. The first part of this concept is just adding your kick drum, not all over the place with every single thing you're hitting, but just together with your right hand notes. That gives you something like this. The next thing that he does that makes this a little bit more interesting is adding what I would like to call a stutter kick, which is just a really quick double on your bass drum where you have the second note of that fast double lining up with your right hand. And this is how it would sound with the constant kick together with the right hand as well as a stutter kick every couple notes. The last thing he does is he does a right hand sweep between his right cymbal as well as his main crash. You could also do that between two crashes, but his ride is a really washy kind of ride, so also be mindful of the kind of cymbals you have in your setup. Putting these three concepts together, we'll have something like this.
idea number three is a cool one. It didn't actually look that difficult at first because I was like, oh yeah, that's just triplets, right? But he's actually using his right hand to lead for all of the triplets. So something wasn't quite right. Normally when you just play triplets hand to hand, you're going to play right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, and you're going to alternate all your downbeats. In this case, he was crashing with the right hand and there was a bit of an accent on the third note of every grouping. So how he achieved that was using the sticking right, right, left. The first right hand note is together with the bass drum note on the cymbal and then your right hand does a sweep to the drum and your left hand plays the accent. Now this can be a little bit tricky to get down but I'll try and show you slowly. One thing to take note is that the right hand sweep only really works going to the left. Okay, so your cymbal and your drum should be going from right to left. If not, like if you're going from this cymbal to this drum, it's not going to work well because your whole arm has to move. If you look at how he's playing, when he goes from the snare drum to the high tom, he's actually crashing on his right cymbal, which is around here. And then when he goes to the floor tom, he actually moves to crashing on his right hand crash, which is pretty far off to the right, so that his hand is still in moving in that right to left direction. So just be aware of the ergonomics of your setup when you try this lick, but it's really cool if you can get it down fast. Let me try and show you guys this lick slower and then I'll speed it up. Idea number four is not too difficult to get down, but it's really punchy and really effective. Basically what it is, is two quick bass drum notes before a snare, and in this case he played the open hi-hat, but you could use any cymbal together with it. Well, what makes this effective is you're playing these high frequency sounds, or high, high mid kind of frequency sounds, and you're preceding it with really low sound. So that gives you a contrast in the frequencies and having that double kick just frees up both your hands to be able to play a unison and a unison just tends to be punchier than hitting one hand at a time. So here's the idea. I would say that idea two is kind of the basis for the entire trash can ending and idea one is the introduction Idea two is the meat of it, and three and four are just little add-ons. This last one especially doesn't make so much sense on its own, so let me try and link idea two to idea four. Alright, so just to recap, idea number one was end your song cleanly with just one nice strong bass drum hit, and then go to your single strokes between your cymbals. Idea number two was adding constant kick drum notes to that together with your right hand, adding in the little stutter, the quick to do, quick right foot kick doubles in between those, and also moving your right hand between cymbals. I think I forgot to mention just now, when you're doing the, um, the bass drum notes together with the single strokes, you can actually accent your right hand a bit. That makes it lead more naturally to moving your right hand between different cymbal surfaces. Having one hand louder than the other gives your playing a bit more dynamics and actually makes you sound louder than if you had everything at that same maximum volume. Idea number three was the really cool right, right, left swipe pattern between the cymbal and the drums with an accent on that last left hand note. Idea number four was the quick kick double on the right foot followed by your snare and hi-hat and unison together to give it that punchy attack. <laughs> Let's just have a look through the snippet one last time and this time I want you to try and identify those four concepts as they're being played. Hope you managed to catch all of those concepts in action. If not, you can always slow down the video and have a look at it again. That brings us to the end of this video. I hope you found it useful and you've picked up some new pieces of vocabulary that you can add into your trash can endings. If you did, remember to hit the like button and also share this video to any of your drummer friends whom you think might benefit from it. Thank you so much for sticking around and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, 
come on. It's like, it's midnight, man. I'm, I'm, I'm going to sleep.